Bill of Exchange and Promissory Notes. You're back. Yes. Are you done arranging the documents? Not really. You want to help? Sure. What can I do? Just look for all receipts and put them together, arranging them from the oldest to the most recent. Can you do that? That's very easy. Good. Meanwhile, we can talk about Bill of Exchange. Bill of Exchange? Mm -hmm. I only know about Bill of Rights, which we study in history and government. Well, Bill of Exchange is another means of payment. I've never heard of it. Now, this is an unconditional order that is written by a creditor to a debtor requesting the debtor to pay up the money he owes to the creditor. Mm -hmm. The creditor states the day that he wants the payment, which can either be immediately or a stated future debt. Of course, you can also state the sum of money that is demanding from. This is interesting. Mm. So in a way, the creditor is forcing the debtor to pay? In a way, yes. It has to be signed by the creditor and it must be accepted by the debtor for it to be enforced. So it only involves the creditor and the debtor? Well, let's use the correct terms, please. The creditor, who is also the one who writes the bill, is called the drawer. Okay, just like it is in check payment. Right. The debtor is called the drawee. And remember, he has to accept the bill. The person who gets to receive the payment from the debtor is called the payee. Of course, the payee may be the drawer. Or any other person as directed by the drawer. There are essential things that you must note down in a bill of exchange. Go on. Of course, it has to be valid. And what makes it valid is the signature of the drawer. So the drawer must sign it. And you already said that the person to whom it is addressed must also accept it. Correct. This acceptance must be unconditional. Lastly, it must also have the appropriate revenue stamp. So, what happens to the bill of exchange after the drawee has accepted it? Then he signs it, and now it is no longer called a bill of exchange, but rather an acceptance. And then? And then it now means that the debtor has accepted full liability for the amount of money he owes the drawer. The bill is therefore legally binding as of this point, and so the acceptor can no longer deny liability. So why would a creditor choose to use a bill of exchange over other methods of recovering their money? Because it has quite a number of merits. Remember what we said about the pay? Yes, we say that he is the person the money is being paid to and may not necessarily be the drawer. Exactly. The drawer, who is also called the holder, may decide to pass the rights on the bill to another person so it can be used to pay a third party. Secondly, the date of payment is clearly outlined in the bill. And the data is bound to it once he accepts the bill. I'm glad you're following. Once the data accepts it, it is now legally binding and it cannot be revoked. This means that the creditor gets to be sure that he's going to get his money. Oh, and one more thing. Yes? If the debtor can pay before due date, then he may end up getting a discount. This way, both sides win. The way you place this bill of exchange, one might think that there are no negative sides of it at all. Well, I was coming to that. Of course, it has its downsides too. Just like a check, it may be dishonored upon maturity. That's too bad. I know. Sometimes banks are reluctant to cash out bills from debtors with doubtful financial backgrounds. This may delay the payment. Also, if the creditor ends up giving the debtor a discount in order to encourage payment, it may become expensive on the creditor. Of course, all this brings us to when it is appropriate to use a bill of exchange. That's right. Its most important function is that it is used when the creditor wants assurance that he will be paid. Secondly, it is used where the creditor wants to make a third-party payment, as in pass the money from the debtor to another person. Don't worry, I understand. Good. It's also used where the creditor wants money, but the debtor does not have it at the time. Since it is illegally binding, it forces the debtor to pay. Let's now look at another means of payment called a promissory note. That is another one that I have never heard of. Don't worry. Today you are going to know a lot of means of payment that you never knew about before. A promissory note is written by a debtor to the creditor stating that he will pay a stated amount of money 
at a particular time or date. Very interesting. Now it is the debtor who is giving the creditor a document as opposed to what we had in bill of exchange where it was the creditor giving the debtor a document. Now that you mention it, there are actually lots of similarities as well as differences between those two. I'd like to hear about the similarities actually. Uh-huh. To begin, both of them are evidence that there is debt that exists mm -hmm. and it needs to be cleared. That is very evident. Both can also be endorsed by a third party and most importantly, they allow the debtor to pay at his or her convenient time. Finally, both are negotiable. I see. And the differences? Uh, of course, one of them is that the bill of exchange is prepared by the creditor while the promissory note is prepared by the debtor. That's right. A bill of exchange has to be accepted by the debtor for it to be legally binding. But a promissory note does not necessarily have to be accepted by a creditor. Oh, yes. You said that the bill of exchange is an unconditional order to pay. Yet, a promissory note, on the other hand, is just a promise to pay. I'm loving this topic more and more. Any other means of payment that we have not discussed yet? Um, a lot, actually. Are you done arranging the receipts? Not yet. Uh, I am almost done, though. Okay.